So Chatter was interesting. He was quite different in the script at some point. So there's some weird takes that I did earlier uh, based off of that. And we ended up kind of bringing him back. I always felt Chatterer was very much like Pinhead, where it, to me, he's so iconic and such a elegant design. We had on the left, we've got uh, Mother. That was definitely one of the kind of uh, fringe ones. And it ends up being very fringe in, in, the, in the final movie, obviously. So kind of one of those ones I would jump over to where it was a bit of a wild card. I think Mother was the, one of the first things I touched on, but in, a, in different takes on what the Cenobites might have been. But Mother was one of the kind of the first ones because it was very, very loose at the beginning where I was just, yeah, she kind of evolved to the point where she was. So what would happen is when we, I would jump around between the Cenobites as we were exploring, in essence, what we were trying to explore initially was eventing things to see where they landed. The mask went through like a crazy amount of iteration uh, of just different attempts on him. And honestly, I think the biggest thing that made him click was when we cracked what his great desire is, which is knowing things, which is knowledge. You know, this kind of, which, which goes back to, it's, it's a bit of that kind of, you know, that's the, the kind of dangerous passion of the Lovecraftian protagonist. I went quite wild with a lot of the initial takes where Voigt was even more stricken by the kind of contraption that they gifted him and merged with his body. It sort of was one of those things where it was getting piled on too much. There was some interesting stuff going on, but it would have required far more time and kind of uh, involvement for it to come across and it to be to read properly and for us to get a sense of what's going on. If you notice mm -hmm. on the loom, you can see it's got these two hooks on the top because one of the things I, I felt was you know, he, he's got his jacket cut so that he can still wear his blazer. Like Frank. Exactly. This kind of, I, I remember that was always such a, you know, such a sensory aspect of the original and the second one, you know, this sense of, of the sort of that, that all sense of not having skin, but then the feeling of having clothes on top is sort of right. so, oof, still forcing yourself to wear clothes, puts you on edge, sympathizing with what the, and the, the blood uh, sensation. The blood yes, and exactly. I have those kind of, in, in relation to each of the kind of nerve, pulleys on his jacket there would be these stains almost like rib marks that would go into the blazer and if you notice on top it's got two hooks and the idea would be that void basically can't lay down with this thing so he would actually have these chains in his bedroom and he sort of suspends himself to get what little kind of pockets of unconsciousness he can manage i even did a depiction of possibly the scene where someone actually discovers him, stumbles in on him like this, and you think a horrible victim of something, but it's actually Voight trying to get some sleep. Rest. <laughs> yeah, trying to rest, exactly.